So welcome everybody to this uh, session at the Digital Annual Conference 2020 on immunization. Uh, today we will hear three very interesting country stories and Gavi will also give an introduction. So immunization data is an essential component of a functioning and strong health information system and strengthening countries uh, uh, immunization data is a key focus from a global perspective and down to the health facility level. The HISP network are glad to collaborate with partners such as Gavi, UNICEF, CDC and WHO on their mission for strengthening immunization data and most importantly country ministries and health and uh, ministries of health and national immunization programs. So HISP and DHIS2 network support this in several ways. Um, firstly, we uh, develop a range of um, uh, a range of uh, digital data packages in collaboration with WHO, such as uh, uh, such as uh, EPI dashboards and analytics, uh, down to uh, more individual data packages uh, that you can see an overview of here. You can find all these packages uh, on our website, both to download and to read more about. And additionally, uh, we uh, also support countries um, in, in country support in uh, 54 countries currently, where we're working very closely with uh, ministries of health and immunization programs to uh, strengthen their uh, immunization systems and data. As uh, the community is growing and there is more and more uh, activities around the uh, immunization, we're trying to actively build a strong community where people can have a place to share their stories and to have insight into the work that uh, is actively being done. So I put here uh, a link to the, to the TOP where you can post questions for this session specifically. Uh, we've also launched a new website for immunization related work on the dhis2.org uh, uh, site. So I encourage you all to go in and have a look at that. Um, and we also have a community of practice for immunization specifically. Uh, and I really, really encourage you to go in there and to keep the discussion going and to post your questions and stories. This is how we learn from each other and to build strong communities across the globe. There are many, many people working on this topic and we can most definitely learn from each other. And then for today's session, uh, I'm very uh, proud and happy to introduce our speakers. So Karin from Gavi, she will give an introduction on Gavi's current work and priorities first. Second, we have Hassan Sibumana, EPI manager from Rwanda. We've been very lucky to work closely with Rwanda for the last years, and they're really at the forefront of building immunization registries. So we're very interested in, uh, in hearing about their experiences. And another very important component of immunization work is supportive supervision. And we're lucky to have two country stories that will illustrate this. Uh, first, Dr. Rose Jalango from Kenya Ministry of Health will talk about how their uh, experiences on using DHIS2 for monitoring supportive supervision. And then secondly, we have Shei Adetola from Afinet in Nigeria, and he will share uh, their experiences of conducting supportive supervision in Nigeria and what that, uh, how that is in fact, has affected the, the service, provision, um, service provision and the supportive supervision activities in Nigeria. So with that, I will give the word to Karen for your presentation. Okay, so good afternoon, good morning to everyone. Let me share my screen. And thank you for confirming that you can see that. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alice. Okay, so I'm very, very happy to be uh, with you today. Of course, uh, we are all missing uh, to really be together, but uh, let's uh, take opportunity of digital to reach more people. So um, just quickly, uh, I wanted to remind you some of the highlights from uh, Gavi. Gavi is a global alliance for immunization. And uh, I just wanted to remind everyone that we, we are uh, an organization that helps sign and under the principle of donor alignment for digital health. 
because it's a very strong principle for us. <clears throat> and you will see the, the list of priority we have so far. I just also wanted to, um, to tell everyone before we continue speaking a lot on DHIS2 that Gavi and all our alliance partners, and let me acknowledge them, is a UNICEF, WHO, and CDC. We are all software and platform and provider agnostic. However, you know, uh, DHIS2 is in more than 60 countries, in more than 50 countries that Gavi support. Uh, so we acknowledge that. And uh, we also acknowledge the fact that uh, University of Oslo and the HISP network are really uh, best positioned to provide good quality guidance and, and technical support to country. Yeah, yesterday, for those who listened to the surveillance uh, session at the closure, we talk a lot about, you know, um, all the disease that uh, we have to take care uh, in what we call the uh, vaccine preventable disease, but we're not also facing many diseases, we're also facing a lot of different data. And this big mess in that screen is really to show you that we are dealing with all sorts of data aggregates and uh, 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 longitudinal case based operational data, population data, geospatial data is a huge thing. And uh, actually, in DHIS2, we have been able uh, to collaborate with all our partners, including, of course, University of Oslo, to develop different, uh, to support the development of different packages that could correspond to different uh, niches of uh, 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 immunization data type. So, um, Anne has presented some of them, so I'll just pass quickly and I just wanted to highlight and, and really acknowledge the hard work of that very strong community uh, of DHIS2 and uh, all the country partners and there have been a lot of great achievements. For the past two years we, we supported uh, the technical assistance in more than 35 countries by Gavi. There will be a wide adoption, very rapid, of the WHO immunization module. And you can see all the numbers. We have some countries uh, like uh, Rwanda who are also shifting from uh, 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 aggregate to longitudinal data. We have this community of practice for immunization that is shaping up a little bit now. And we have some evidence that um, uh, with the HIS2, there is a, an increased data completion, timeliness, and, and quality and use of data. So we are. I think on the right track, and it was a quite fast track for, for immunization because immunization uh, were among the latest to uh, kind of shift and adopt uh, DHIS2 for immunization data. Here you can see the um, progress. We were quite orange <laughs> two years ago. We are progressing, and this is to show that gradually uh, many countries, more than 22 now uh, among the countries we support, have stopped parallel system. Uh, this is quite important for us. So, besides you know all the great achievements, uh, we want to say that there is persistent challenge and unfinished business, and this is really around the effective data use and you know our. Uh, people now can use the data that, yes, great, they are in the HIS2, I can those data to be used to make sure that um, we are taking uh, the right decision. A good uh, example, and Nigeria will we'll talk uh, uh, today as well in another topic, but a lot of uh, progress has been made on the quality of data that is uh, in the national platform in Nigeria. Also, an highlight in Togo, huge progress on timeliness, and also they started to work on the triangulation of data between the vaccine use and the number of children vaccinated. So, a lot of good achievement. But now, if you look forward, and we have uh, we are preparing a, a new approach for digital health information in Gavi, uh, you will see at the bottom are six uh, priority, and actually the HIS2. Will be you know of support uh, in in all those uh, digital health information priority, so we are really really working for looking forward, and we we'll need uh, all of you to work. And I highlighted some area on the geospatial and all the effort we could do with bottleneck analysis app and the identification of what we call zero dose children children who have never been vaccinated. We see real time monitoring of campaign data triangulation. Uh, case-based surveillance we talked yesterday, um, and IFI and bus notification. A lot of things to move forward and encourage um, research. I know this is the main uh, principle of the community of practice. Uh, I think we are going to invest more in evaluating learning from what has been uh, working well 
And actually last year I was seeing one of the area to move forward, it was on supervision and I'm so glad that this year we have two papers that will be uh, uh, presented by Nigeria and Kenya on that aspect. So now I'll put the new topic for the year and I will really encourage the community to really work and see how DHS to support us in our mission to identify better the area with the highest number of missed children for vaccination, children who never receive vaccine. How can we use all this DHS to power uh, to, to work on that? And please, let's make that um, DHS2 community very, very alive for immunization and vibrant. Uh, we can never learn better than from each other. Uh, so thank you for all of you. I put a lot of heads to his piece, the wide community to University of Oslo and the community of practice, our partner, WHO, UNICEF, CDC, all of the expanded partners that are embracing the HIS2 agenda, and of course, uh, countries and all the data users. Over to you. Thank you uh, very much, Corinne, for your presentation. It was uh, very interesting to hear about your uh, the Gavi digital health information priorities. I think that's really a topic that we can continue in the in the COP as well to discuss how this can be solved, uh, and um, and also your new topic for research uh, with reaching the, the the children that are not getting immunized to uh, also use the COP to uh, to discuss this further. So with that, I will give the word to Hassan to uh, tell us about the Rwanda experience. So thank you, Anne. Good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. So let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Hello? We don't see your screen. Uh, we don't see your screen, uh, Hassan. Share, share screen, the, the green but, uh, but, uh, button uh, at the bottom. Yes, now I can see the screen. Now we, now we see your screen. Wonderful. Okay, thank you, Anne. Yeah, um, first of all, let me thank uh, organizers of this meeting. Um, it is very important for us to share our experience on immunization in Africa, which has been introduced in Rwanda um, last year in September. Um, So this is a Rwanda profile, the overview. So we have been using uh, DHS2 since 2012 and um, uh, our total population now uh, almost 13 million. So number of health facilities we have, there are so many, they're increasing a lot. So in total, we've got 48 hospitals, 515 health centers, and also we have got private clinics. Now there are more than uh, 300 and we have got a lot of documents in which uh, data managers and uh, vaccinators can use on the field, including SOPs at national district and um, health clinics level, they can use them. And then, as I have said, we have introduced uh, EPA tracker uh, last year in September. And uh, if you look at number of children we're expecting to vaccinate, there are so many. So we have got almost 370,000 per year. Um, and uh, in total, we have got 30 districts. Yeah? So you can ask why we have chosen to use uh, immunization e tracker. So uh, this picture speak a lot. So you can see uh, this is the one of the picture taken from the health center. So where they have been keeping uh, all records of vaccinated children, uh, actually have been printing two cards one uh, to be given to parents and another one to be kept at a health center so that we can um, follow up easily the vaccination chart. And you can see it was really very challenging to keep all those cards. So we think that with the uh, immunization tracker, we are going to improve data quality, but also we are going to reduce um, number of uh, data collection tools we have been using on the field since the beginning of the vaccination program in 1980. 
So uh, we think that uh, the running cost will be reduced, but also this immunization e-tracker, we think that uh, uh, is going to help us to reach every chart and also to track uh, individual data, real-time individual data. And then we think that uh, we are going to solve the issue of denominator. You know, uh, sometimes it's not only in Rwanda, it is uh, one of the biggest issue in vaccination programs where uh, immunization coverage, uh, if it's not low, very low, less than 80%, it is sometimes um, higher than 100%. So meaning that uh, in that case, there is so many issues, one uh, of the issue can be denominator. So with immunization e tracker, we think that uh, we shall be uh, linking um, the system to CRVS, and then we shall solve this issue of denominator because actually we'll be sure that we are waiting a number of children to be vaccinated. And uh, this number uh, from CRVS can be used as a proxy denominator. And then uh, we think that with immunization uh, e-tracker, we shall be keeping vaccination data for long uh, because actually currently we're having issues with um, uh, children now um, aged 20 and more than 20 years uh, going to study abroad, coming to vaccination program to request for uh, their record, vaccination record. You can understand it's sometimes very challenging uh, to make sure that um, we have got um, vaccination history of if each and every child, it is um, a big issue. So with immunization e tracker, so we shall solve also this issue of um, keeping vaccination uh, record for every child. And then uh, immunization e tracker is helping us at a central level because actually uh, from central level now we can monitor what is being done in the all district. So can you imagine uh, in one district the child can be vaccinated and at the same time contract the vaccinated child um, using immunization e tracker. Um, so, as a background of this immunization e tracker, I have said this in September when we introduced um, uh, uh, immunization e tracker. And thank you, uh, thanks a lot to Gavi because actually um, we, we have been um, having the support from Gavi uh, because actually it requires some uh, IT equipment to, to, to be deployed in all health facilities. So with the GAVI support, we have been able to procure a desktop to all health centers. And then uh, we are trying to see how we can introduce also um, immunization e tracker in uh, uh, private health facilities because actually uh, it has been delayed by this COVID context. But uh, we think that by at the end of this year, we shall be also uh, using um, immunization e tracker in private clinics. So we have got also three staff trained in each health facility. Uh, and then uh, also the environment has been changed because actually people now are using um, uh, IT software. So uh, it is something uh, really motivating health school workers. So at the beginning, it was uh, very difficult because actually uh, they have been saying that it is um, the overload because actually they have been, uh, they are using at the same time immunization e tracker. But you have been, we have kept also the traditional uh, records. So because actually you cannot change the, uh, the existing system at once. So it is progressively. So now we, we are very happy that uh, now they are trying to understand uh, the, um, the rationale of the use of immunization e tracker. And then we are also um, uh, planning to provide tablet to all health, to all health facilities. Uh, uh, these uh, tablets will be helping to capture data during uh, outreach vaccination session. This is very important because actually have got a number of children being vaccinated in the community. So they are almost 10% of the total population. So we have got so many activities ongoing to uh, strengthen this immunization e tracker. So um, currently um, we are conducting data quality review uh, with much focus on immunization e-tracker. So this is continuous exercise. Uh, we have planned to conduct this data quality review on a quarterly basis. So what we are doing in this data quality review exercise, so our staff from central level, so are going down on the field uh, and then from the hospital, they can uh, invite um, vaccinators and data managers from all health centers. And then it is the time to review what they have been um, uh, recording in immunization e-tracker. And at the same time, they're trying to compare what they have registered so that uh, we make sure that once uh, it will be 100%, uh, 
we shall uh, remove all paper recording and we think that uh, by 2022, so it will be possible to remove all papers from um, the, the system. And then with immunization e tracker, we think that we shall be improving the coverage beyond the current level. Um, uh, actually, um, uh, the immunization uh, coverage uh, is uh, more than 90% in Rwanda, but uh, we think that we shall go beyond 95% of the current uh, coverage. And then, as I have said, we are trying to link the immunization e tracker to CRVS. This is very important because actually CRVS, uh, I, I mean, uh, civil registration of birth and death. So um, uh, people are born in health facilities. Now they are being recorded uh, at the same time in health facility. So it is very easy now to collaborate with CRVS so that uh, we make sure that uh, children are uh, registered in CRVS system. They, they we can use uh, that number as uh, the proxy denominator in vaccination program. And then we are trying also to see how can assess uh, what we have been using the whole year. I have said that uh, immunization shock has started in September last year. So it is almost one year. So we are collaborating with UNICEF to see how we can uh, conduct this assessment. And also we think that we shall be publishing uh, a paper on uh, um, immunization e tracker, but also the feasibility to link it to CRVS. And then uh, we are also um, working together with HISP Rwanda. Of course, we support from University of Oslo to see how we can also track vaccine stock at all levels. So we think that uh, by the end of this year, uh, it will be uh, deployed in all health facilities because actually we are at uh, the final stage. So what is meaning just to test it and then train people from the field so that they can start to use it. Eh? So this is very important because actually it is one of the requirements uh, for your information in Rwanda, currently um, Auditor General now is not only focusing on the public finance, but also on data. So we have got this recommendation of seeing how we can digitalize also vaccine stock management. And also we are working together with HISP on AFIS module to be integrated also in immunization e tracker. So what is the added value of this um, immunization e tracker? So actually it increased the confidence in data collection because actually um, the whole country, we are using standard variables are being collected and also standard data collection tools because actually um, we think that uh, we shall be now publishing so many papers because actually we will be confident that uh, we have got good data. And also uh, with immunization e tracker have uh, seen that there is a reduction of waiting time in health facilities. We have been uh, using uh, so many hours to make sure that we vaccinate uh, all children. So you can imagine a parent uh, having a small baby waiting for three, four hours. So currently uh, we have seen that there is a reduced time. So this is also has to be uh, evidenced with that so that we can publish, everyone can understand the value of this um, immunization e tracker. And then the data quality review also is very easy because actually uh, with very few minutes, you can go to the health center and review what they have been doing uh, in uh, immunization e tracker. You can easily track how many children vaccinated, how many children missed, how many children plan to be vaccinated uh, in near future for next sessions. And uh, also uh, the monitoring is very easy because actually with Immunization Tracker, we have created some dashboard. And also because actually, you know, it is uh, at the same platform with DHS2. So even the analysis, that analysis is very easy. And then vaccination program central level uh, is overseeing remotely the data collection from all health facilities. This is also something really very new. And uh, we think that it will help to improve the quality of data we are collecting from the health facilities. Of course, there is some challenges. Um, one of the challenges is the turnover of training staff. So I know uh, I, I, I have said that we have trained three uh, staff from uh, each health center, but you, you know, it's not very easy to maintain the staff, especially in the health sector. So they're always moving. So we have got this issue of turnover of training staff. And uh, of course, uh, sometimes we have got a disruption of internet connectivity. So even though uh, the whole Rwanda, you can use internet, uh, but it is not easy sometimes in 
rural areas where there is uh, sometimes a disruption of internet connectivity. And then use of WeTracker during outreach vaccination session, it is still an issue because actually uh, we think that uh, it will be solved by the introduction of uh, tablets so that people can be using also tablets and they should to collect the data. And then we have seen that uh, we need really a, a permanent technical staff to support users' requests huh? because actually um, she's to Rwanda, so they are not so many. Even though they are helping a lot, but they are very, very overloaded. And especially during this COVID context, so it is not easy really to, um, to respond uh, timely on requests from, from users on the field. So with, this few, with these few slides, so I think I have briefly explained what we are doing in Rwanda with the tracker. So I thank you a lot for your attention. It's over to you. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Hassan, for your very interesting uh, presentation. I think it's incredibly in uh, inspiring to see what you've uh, managed to do in Rwanda. And, and it really uh, speaks to the challenge that Karin posed with this uh, reaching the zero dose uh, children. I think following this more closely going forward and how that contributes to that goal uh, is very, very, very interesting. Um, uh, the Rwanda story is also posted on the community of practice. And uh, this is also a great place to ask uh, questions to the Rwanda team. Um, for those of you who are interested in, in how they have gone about uh, working with this and the challenges they are facing. And if you have any common challenges or solutions, that's a great place for that. And with that, we will move into the second part of this uh, session, uh, where we will talk more about uh, the role of supportive supervision and DHIS2. So with that, I will give the word to Dr. Rose uh, Jalango. The floor is yours. Thank you, Anne. Good uh, morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, so I'm going to give an experience uh, on how we've used uh, DHIS2 event capture application to support supportive, supportive supervision in Kenya. So I'm going to give a Kenyan experience. So this is the background information of the country. So we have 47 counties that are interdependent and the use of DHIS2 nationwide began in 2013. So it is the main health information system where all health programs collect their data and this is used across the country and over 12,000 facilities are using this platform. So basically the data collection is both paper based and DHIS2. So from the health facilities we do use the paper based form and then the data is keyed in into the DHIS2 at the sub-national level but there are some large volume health facilities that actually key in data directly into the DHIS2. So supportive supervision is actually a facilitative process uh, between a supervisee and a supervisor so as to ensure that there is joint problem solving and communication and mentorship. So this is in a way to drive a better use of data. So in Kenya, previously, support supervision has been done at the national level, sub-county level, and the county level using paper base. So given that we have 47 counties, we did have various forms of papers that were used by the different sub-national levels, and then we had electronic platforms that were not harmonized. So what did this mean for the country? So we had very fragmented and inconsistent supportive supervision data. So it was very difficult to access historical data that was done for supportive supervision. Then again, it was very difficult to aggregate support supervision data. So hence, analysis and interpretation of that data was very difficult. Therefore, using supportive supervision data to make decisions has, has been a gap for a very long time in that the papers that were used for support supervision are actually left at the health facilities. So at the national level, there was no visibility of what's happening 
at the lower level after supportive supervision. So there's this uh, DSI2 event capture uh, for immunization where we, de we decided that we are going to combine all the um, sup uh, supportive supervision and have one consolidated checklist of the immunization supportive checklist. So we have this platform that is already existing in the DHI2. And on this event capture platform, it is very familiar, the staff are very familiar with it. So there is no additional training that is required because it already exists in the system and they know what it is. And then the other advantage about the GHI2 event capture is that we have, you can do offline data capture for all the facilities and then it will synchronize once you have access to data. To data, to data. And then there is no need for a separate server. We are using the existing server to store the supportive supervision data. The beauty about this platform is that it's going to use the pre-existing information that is in the DHIS2. So for example, the name of the health facility, the organization unit, all those are already in the DHIS2. So this tool is used both at the national, at the county, and the sub-county level. And it is able to pick the geo coordinates of every place that the supervisor is going to pick there to conduct support supervision. So the objective of this platform was actually to ensure a uniform supportive supervision checklist across the 47 counties, and again, promote supportive supervision, a platform where supportive supervision data can be used for decision making so that we can improve data-driven feedback practices. So it is an Android and web-based supportive supervision that is used to collect data. And the data can be compared over time across counties. So this allows one county, one subnational level, to compare its performance against another subnational level. And this is over a duration of time. So it's customizable, uh, dashboard friendly, and allows user friendly data visualization. So at this one, I'm going to highlight an example of how we've used the DHIS2 dashboard. Um, in this platform. So this is uh, one of the counties in Kenya called Garissa County. And at the national level in the DHI2 system, we did realize that they have consistently high tentacle coverage. That is coverage above 100%. That is from their monthly routine uh, report. So, uh, once, uh, so we targeted Garissa County as one of the counties to be included for support supervision. So one of the results of the output of the support supervision was that there were, there were new staff that had been posted to the health facility, so they did not know how to record and report um, immunization data. Rose, are you there? It seemed like Rose's internet connection got a bit abrupt. I'll give her a few more uh, seconds to see if the connection comes back before continuing. Yeah, okay. But uh, so for now, uh, thank you very much, Rose, for your uh, presentation. Um, I think I will move it over to our next uh, presenter, Sheyi, from uh, Nigeria, from Afinet. Uh, and then if, uh, if Rose returns, she can, she can finish off in the end. But I will give the word to, uh, to uh, Afinet and Sheyi. Thank you so much, Han, and I thank you for our co presenter. I just want to share my screen. Just to be sure how you can see my screen. Yes. Awesome. So I'll be talking on the improving. Um, 
routine immunization um, through um, We're talking of improving with immunization, allied DHIS through SMS real time reporting, and um, through supportive supervision. And I'm going to be sharing an experience from um, a northern part of Nigeria, a Niger state, in August 2019. So I'm making this presentation on behalf of my co presenters. Uh, my name is Aditola Shea from African Feed Epidemiology, and this are following um, the outlines of the presentation. The introduction, the objectives, method, result, conclusion, and recommendation. Um, this is just a background of the country. Um, for routinization coverage, data quality issues, and supportive supervision are linked with low routine immunization uptake in the country. So this necessitated the declaration of the National Emergency Routine Immunization Coordination Center, NERIC. So in order to them to improve um, the uptake of routine immunization in the country, there are a lot of um, interventions that were implemented. And one of them, it is the, um, the, the real-time DHIS2 SMS and reporting um, platform. So under the essence of the um, DHIS2 SMS reporting platform is to generate daily time RI SMS on the dashboard, uh, which can enable um, at the national level to make a decision uh, instead of waiting till month ending. So how does this system actually work? And the system work um, with the help of the short message system SMS why the aid facility are expected to send the conduct of session immediately after they finish conducting the session. And this is achieved through some um, little configuration of the phone number. The phone number is configured and has been linked with the DHIS and so that it can synchronize the message. And basically, that is how the, um, the system work. So um, despite um, all the effort and building, the, the, the rollout was actually done in 18 priority states in Nigeria, which Nigeria state happened to be one of them. So low reporting data, data quality issues continue to persist despite the implementation of DHIS through RISMAs in Nigeria state. So the team decided to um, pay a, a, a supervisory visit to Nigeria state. So why do we need to go to Niger State? Uh, we have two objectives, um, to conduct data quality assessments at the local government area and the aid facility level, and also to identify key challenges. So what are the methods that we actually utilize? Um, we conduct a, a supportive supervisory to Niger precisely in August 2019 following review of its SMS dashboard, and there was a cross-section assessment was conducted in 12 selected LGAs based on set criteria. So are the, what are the set criteria that were used? So we picked 10 good performing LGAs and two, uh, 10 poor performing LGAs and two good performing LGA. And when we talk about performing LGA, we talk about LGA that are reporting rate is above 80% and the low performing LGA and LGA that the reporting rate are below 80%. And then majorly we focus on three indicators. And the three indicators are the weekly plan, we have the fixed section, and then we have the outreach section. So when we talk about the fixed section, the fixed section means the immunization services, that is all antigen were given at the edge facility. Why the outreach section means the outreach in the section are held in a location other than a health facility from which healthcare worker can go and return that same day. And they usually is held periodically, sometimes twice in a month, sometimes twice in a week, sometimes three times in a week, depending on the coverage and the um, target population of that particular location. All right, so after the, um, the, 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 the repair and advocate visit to the state and the LGA, and uh, we actually work with 12 LGA, like I said earlier, 
and uh, we visit for each of those LG that we work, we visited three at facility and um, to make it um, 36 at facility altogether. But unfortunately, because of secu um, security compromise, we were able to just visit only the five at facility. So at the FGA level and at the um, at facility level, and we conducted we conducted a, um, a a data quality assessment DQA. Uh, with the help of the ODK that was that was used, so we, we went through their records and uh, we, we used the ODK for data collection. So as a result of the uh, activities that we did in, in Niger State, um, these are the results. Um, three months review of um, data post supervisory show an improvement in the number of eight facility reported weekly section plan and with an average of 81% compared to 51, 56% before the visit. And then the number of edge facilities that are expected to report in Niger State are 1,061 edge facility. So out of the 1,061 edge facility, we recorded 81% of 1,061 edge facility improvement in the number of them submitting the weekly section plan. Similarly, the proportion of that facility with the conduct of fixed session increased from 30% um, before the visit to, to 19% after the, the visit. So um, in terms of um, the outreach session also too, we, in terms of outreach session too, we also recorded an, a great improvement from outreach session and which actually helped with as a result of the supportive supervision that was and conducted. Also, an improvement in percentage of uh, conduct of section supervised with an average of 46% and compared to 29% um, before the visit. So, in other areas, we recorded some other improvement also. So, in the area uh, where uh, people sending wrong format messages, uh, we recorded an improvement also in that. And uh, there is a a significant improvement in number of health facility with zero reports compared to um, the visits to Niger State. So um, during the visit, there are some findings that we observe um, poor management, we observe poor management of, of data entry and which leads to a loss of data uh, repersonation, uh, also uh, wrong entry and submission of data from tally sheets to monthly at facility modification summary, uh, which led to the experiences and consistencies between various data tools in most of the at facility uh, visited. Also, uh, the use of wrong format to send our SMS was observed. The use of unconfigured phone number to send our SMS was also observed. So only few at facilities have data containers across the reporting tools and the platform. And uh, lastly, um, inadequate support supervision by OGA teams to the air facility and level. So what are the uh, mitigation that we actually um, make use of? So the capacity building of the earth care worker were built on the following. Um, proper management of RI data tools, um, the adequate filling of the data tools, um, using the formats to send the RI SMS data. We also configured the phone number of the healthcare worker that were not configured before the visit, and we provided a feedback to the state. So uh, let me conclude. Um, let me let us know that con conduct of supportive supervision is key to sources of any intervention at service delivery point. Improvement in proportion of supervisory visits to their facility, mentorship, feedback, and implement implementation of action plus led to, number one, improve our reporting in Niger State on the real-time DHIS2 SMS reporting platform, also increased conduct of fixed session and outreach session. So we recommended that national should support state and LGA to routinely conduct supportive supervision visit to the edge facility, number one, to motivate the staff, two, to strengthen their capacity to deliver and report service programs, and lastly, um, to mentor and address issues in a timely manner. I would like to acknowledge the um, National Primary Health Care Development Agency, uh, U.S. Center for Disease and Control and Prevention, Niger State Government, and African Field Epidemiology Network. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for your presentation. I think this uh, this is a really good example of, of uh, doing studies that show the value of these interventions and, and how it affects, uh, affects the immunization work uh, going on in countries. So thank you so much. Um, we can share the abstracts on the, on the COP so people can also read more about your study. I think I will give the word back to uh, Rose. She was uh, having some trouble with her internet connection, but she's back now so she can finish off her presentation, her, her final couple of slides. <laughs> Here you go, Rose. Okay, thank you, Anne. All right. So I was on that slide showing an example of how we are using DHIS2 dashboard for both supportive supervision and translating it with the national routine immunization coverage data. So this is Garissa County, one of the counties in Kenya. We had um, from routine coverage data, the data was more than 100%. It was selected, targeted for supportive supervision. And one of the findings of the support supervision is that the healthcare workers had, were doing poor recording and reporting of immunization data. So there was some training that was done so on job training and mentorship. And we did see that with improved knowledge of reporting and recording, we did see that the quality of data that was being reported monthly improved over time. So the next step for the support supervision, the beauty about this support supervision tool is that it can inter be integrated with other analytics tools that are embedded in the DHIS2. So for example, the bottleneck analysis tool that is currently in the DHIS2. So this data can be translated with the support supervision tool in that, for example, if we find that they are perennial stockout in a facility, the bottleneck analysis can be able to give us some of the reasons why there's consistent stockout. So they, it could be because they are not forecasting, challenges with transport, and either they are having high wastage rates. So the health facility can be able now to discuss some of the interventions that they want to do in order to mitigate these problems that they're having. And we have an action tracker module, again within the DHI2, that helps to monitor any implementation status of the action point. So, so what are some of the lessons that we have learned from the DHI2 tracker implementation is that we have real time access to data, immunization data. So we are able to monitor immunization performance over time and comparing it with other, with other subnational levels. Then it's very possible to identify the bottleneck and also track the possible interventions and share feedback for share immediate feedback for, uh, for correction. And then the other beauty, uh, the other thing about this platform is that it not only can it be used for supportive supervision in immunization, but all the other health pro programs using GHI2 in Kenya. So I, I'd like to acknowledge Gavi, uh, the Vaccine Alliance for supporting, for giving us financial support. And then we have technical assistance from CDC and AFNET, and we work with my colleagues within the Ministry of Health and also the University of Nairobi. Thank you very much, and over to you, Anne. Thank you, Rose. I'm glad that you were able to finish off your uh, slides of your interesting uh, of your interesting presentation. So uh, we have five minutes left before we have to close up. So I will just, uh, I will close off with uh, one question coming from the community of practice. Uh, and the question goes to Hassan in Rwanda. So um, the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, um, they have several Latin American countries uh, that are interested in using DHIS2 for immunization. And the question coming from, uh, from the people working there are, is there anything that you didn't foresee when you started to work uh, on your project that you have experienced out in your, uh, uh, in your work with, uh, with the developing immunization registries that you could share as, a, as an experience to, uh, to the Latin American countries? Yeah, 
Yeah, thank you, Anne. Um, so actually, with uh, the introduction of immunization, there is a lot of experience we can share. So first of all, uh, you have to make sure that uh, uh, people are mobilized to, 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 to support this initiative. Because actually, um, you know, people are very familiar with using paper. So if you introduce um, uh, a software or a digital system, so you have to make sure that you have mobilized all of them. And also you have to make sure that uh, at least you can have uh, more than 70% uh, of internet connectivity because actually this is the most of the, one of the biggest issue uh, when people have got the system and they cannot use it because of the internet. So sometimes uh, it is uh, demotivating. And also we, you have to make sure that if you, have, you are going to introduce this system, you have got a good support from leaders because actually uh, everything starts from them. So, and also uh, you have to be prepared because actually you will need uh, more equipment, more IT uh, equipment. So there is a lot of things we can discuss, but uh, at least when, once we have started, uh, yeah, it is good because actually uh, people can easily understand why they're using um, uh, the new system because actually what we are seeing, uh, when people get familiar with the system, uh, there is a reduction of workload, and also there is, um, uh, uh, the, the, there is an, an advantage at all levels of using uh, some very less resources for printing, and also uh, people are very happy because actually they are not uh, spending, spending um, uh, so more uh, time at the health clinic waiting to be uh, to, to, to get immunized their children. So this is very important, but also uh, we have to make sure that um, uh, you, 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 you have defined very well the ID of a client, because actually um, what you have seen as a problem here on the field, once the child has been vaccinated in health facility X and want to move from that health facility to another one, you have to make sure that you also you have um, so that issue of uh, ID. Uh, and also because this immunization tracker can be um, uh, linked to so many other systems, like the SMS reminder we are trying to, to introduce. So you have to make sure that uh, we, you, you ask everyone to make sure that uh, uh, if he don't have uh, uh, a phone cell, so he can at least get uh, the one from a community worker and also, um, we, you, you have to make sure that uh, you, you, you are requesting people to come with the, their ID so that it can be very easy to identify every, in the, every child being uh, enrolled in the system. So um, there is so many uh, we can share. So maybe um, we, we, we shall, um, I think we shall um, share the, the assessment report we are going to conduct with UNICEF and we think that it will be out uh, by December this year. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Hassan. Uh, I think there's a lot to learn across countries there. Uh, I just want to end by thanking all our presenters uh, and the people listening in. Um, there are already some questions to the Kenya team, for example, on the COP, on the solutions that you have, uh, that you are using, and people are interested in how you've done that. So I encourage you to go in and, and answer those questions, Kenya team. So I will now uh, leave the room over to the next session. There are people knocking on the door <laughs> for the next session. So thank you, everybody, and goodbye from the immunization session. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. OK, thank you, Anne. Bye. Thank you, and bye.